Hey, I'm Seth Johnson with Land House. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you're new to the channel, this is my shop. It is a mess, but it's where I do a lot of my work here. Uh, so I've got my French cleat wall on this side, storage shelves, and a bunch of storage for various things over here, and then a ram pump building section. So uh, today is Tuesday, which is my YouTube day. And uh, it started off this morning between 5 a.m. and 7 as rainy, uh, which is typical for a Tuesday for me the past couple of weeks. But it has stopped. So uh, there's a few things I want to do today. I want to head back up the mountain here and get a flow rate in the creek for this summer's project of micro hydro. Then I want to um, be in the shop here my ram pump boxes like to fall off this side over here. The other ones have a support piece for my shelves that keep them in place. Uh, so I'm going to put a little uh, piece down here to hold this on and then a piece up there just to keep these in place. Uh, and then if we have time I want to add a little shelf under my workbench here. I thought it would be cool to have a little uh, a tool storage shelf that I could just grab with a handle and pull out and have some tools in there. Um, so let's go ahead and get some of these shop things done first and then we will walk up the mountain to get a flow rate of the creek. Oh also uh, I just finished the camera gantry system that is on the track here in the shop uh, so we can get some footage around the shop here without having to use my tripod. When this thing is fully extended it has about a four foot base and uh, it's just difficult to walk around here in the shop with that size tripod sitting on the floor. So I'm going to move you to this and we will get started. You are now on the camera gantry system. There's a little bit of sway whenever I let go of the camera and I have a thought for how I'm going to fix that. But um, let's go ahead and slide on over here. And let's get the, I think I'm going to use my uh, Craig pocket hole uh, attachment today. So we're going to use that. Okay, so far I like this camera mount system pretty good. This is the first video I have filmed with it. So we'll see how well it works for you. Hopefully pretty good. Let's get your angle up a little bit. If you've never used the Craig pocket hole jig, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so the first project I'm stepping into here is just to hold up those boxes. And I thought uh, just a couple of pieces of plywood scrap ought to do it. So uh, I'm going to use the pocket hole jig here to just make a couple of holes. You know, I probably should set my depth here. <laughs> uh, three quarter. Okay, yeah, that's where we are. All right, false alarm. Battery's about dead. <laughs> Made it work. Okay, there is the holes. There are the holes, I suppose. Let's go ahead and get this attached to the wall. I can tell you this would have already been a difficult angle for that tripod. Let's see here. If I get the boxes about here, I think that'll be pretty good. I might could squeeze a few more boxes in there at this angle here. Aha, there we go. Well done, all right. So that's the top part. Let's get the bottom one real quick. I'd probably better put a couple of uh, drill holes in here or this might split. It's a tiny little piece. Okay, 
All right, go ahead and start a couple of these little Torx screws. I'm thinking just something incredibly simple like right here. Nice. That ought to hold a box in place. So be honest with me. What do you think about the camera angles so far using this camera gantry? I like it a lot. Uh, still have to work through a few of the kinks. Like this direction, left and right in the shop, works fantastic. Um, and then if I move you forward some, there's a couple of little kinks here, but right there's a little bit, but then it gets better right here at the end. Uh, so anyway, I like it. I have to kind of touch the camera just slightly to get it to stop uh, the pendulum effect a little bit, but it's working well. Um, so if you missed the build videos, this is kind of what it looks like. It's got uh, this piece here that goes up to a, a pole that swivels, and that is on a cart that slides back and forth on this set of tracks and uh, this way as well. I don't remember why, but I purchased a set of drawer sliders Ugh, and they are full open, uh, several of them in there. And uh, I was thinking it would be nice to come down here on this side of my workbench. Uh, these pieces were a guide for my router, but I can take those out. Uh, anyway, mount a board across here and over here as well and then attach those sliders on here and that would give me the option to have a, a drawer pull out here. And let's see, where is that old toolbox? Ha, ah, there you are. I think in here I may have an extra... Yeah. This is my granddad's where he passed away. Yeah, there's one. A couple of them, actually. Uh, these little decorative drawer slides could be used. Um, anyway, I thought that might be a fun little project for us to tackle today. But, before we start that, I have got my five gallon bucket. Let's head up the creek and see what the flow rate is of the, uh, the water. To see, uh, I'm kind of expecting it to be around the 25 gallons a minute. Um, hopefully, so let's head up there and see. Oh, man, check that out. That's no good. My garden hose is destroyed. Anyway, um, see these two pieces of inch and a quarter pipe? Uh, remember that whenever we get up to the top. I have something to say about those. Okay, I made it up to the top of the hill. It's only 1,200 foot walk and 150 feet up, but it gets me. Uh, so in the last video, I posted that there could be the potential for moving this intake from here around the hill and over there and save me 200 foot of pin stock. But uh, I posted that video and got some pretty good feedback. Uh, Joe Malovich, I think I got the name right that time. Let me know if I didn't. <laughs> uh, he posted a few things that might be a problem. Um, there'd be some dips and little valleys that might freeze up and also silt and sediment is going to build up in those little spots and it's going to be difficult to keep clean. So I think I will go back to my original design which is to have my intake box here run downhill just right out of here somewhere to a five gallon barrel which will act as a silt catchment and then I'll have the pinstock go all the way down to where I want it to end up. Um, so it increases my pinstock length by close to 200 foot which will reduce the uh, pressure by about five more psi and so instead of uh, 59 psi we'll have closer to the 54 psi but uh, Spencer Langston who is going to be the sponsor of the micro hydro um, series uh, sent a video testing the um, turbine at 45 psi so uh, we'll have 10 more and he got 371 watts. So um, we should be able to get, I'm just gonna say 400, um, depending on my flow rate, at the turbine. 
So I'm still pleased with 400 watts. But anyway, let's go ahead and get a flow rate here and see what we're dealing with. I'm calling it 13 seconds, which is 23 gallons per minute. So still well within our uh, healthy range here. I mentioned those one and a quarter inch black poly pipes down at the bottom. I'm thinking I could use that here. So I'd have uh, my intake box stretched across that whole rock there. And then have those, uh, maybe two of those pipes coming out, sneaking down here to my uh, 55 gallon barrel. Um, that way, um, I wouldn't have to double up on my two inch pipe for this little stretch. Um, and if I have to use three of those, I've got about 200 foot of that one and a quarter um, poly. So I should be able to uh, maybe use uh, bulkhead fittings into that box uh, to bring the water out. And um, I may not even worry about silt catchment at this point and just worry about it here at the 55 gallon barrel. The plan is that the water will come into that barrel at about the halfway mark or so, um, or even at the top, it doesn't matter. And then uh, the penstock that will be going out to the turbine will be at about the halfway mark of the barrel. That way, silt and sediment can fill up the bottom, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 gallons of that barrel. And I can just uh, open a plug, drain it out, and hopefully get the silt out of there. Um, so we'll see how well that's gonna go. So the creek is running at 23 gallons per minute, which is between the 15 and 30 that I anticipate uh, it's gonna fluctuate most of the year. Okay, back in the shop here, I found this piece of scrap plywood. Uh, all these triangles were drawn because I was making my shelves, and uh, those triangles are the supports back there in the back, and I didn't need those so uh, this piece is just extra which means what I can do is uh, use this nice side as the top of the shelf so the first thing I want to do is get up under here and remove these router guides that I put up and uh, I guess we'll have to start measuring from one side to the other and uh, see what kind of shelf we want to make I'm kind of thinking I could recycle the uh, those uh, pocket hole screws there and maybe put some uh, plywood sides on this thing. Uh, what kind of plywood do I have laying around here? Anyway, I think I've got enough plywood over here in the corning, a corner that we could, uh, could use. So yeah, there's that full piece right there. Whenever I put my vise in, I use a router to cut out under here. And uh, I don't need the guides here anymore, so let's go ahead and remove those. Uh, let's see what our measurements are here. Looks like 24 inch between the two. And if we go the full length from the back, we've got uh, 26 and 3 quarters. So, I uh, definitely want the drawer to be on this side. Uh, so let's go ahead and cut down some 2x4s to go on the two different sides and we'll get those matched up. I was just about to cut my 2x4s when I found these old pieces of track. I can actually cut this little piece down. Instead of having a 2x4, I can use a piece of plywood and then I can use this piece and this piece as the, uh, the side of the drawer. I'm going to see if I can get the uh, plywood separated here. So I can support this drawer. Uh, this mallet here came from the Greenacre Homestead channel. If you haven't checked them out, I should have a link in the description down below 
uh, they have some pretty cool woodworking videos and uh, lately they've been remodeling their house so definitely go check them out. Okay. Hey, nice. The other side also came off. I think it had less glue than this first side. Cool. So I just need this to be cut into two strips of 24 inches. This is what I was thinking. I've got the slide here. I can go ahead and get this attached and then I could uh, flip this into place and put some screws here on this end and it should work out pretty good. Went ahead and finished the first one here. So it's basically just uh, the slider attached to this piece of plywood. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one done here. Uh, what I did was I came out two and three quarter inch on this piece. So let's do that again, two and three quarter. And then just lined this up here. Something like that. Uh, I got yeah, open this to get the get to the screw holes here. I can't even remember why I bought these uh, uh, sliders here. I'm coming down here eight inches, I do believe. So just making a mark at that point. Okay. Now I found out that from this side to this side is 24 inch, but in the back it's 23 and three quarters. So I'm off by a quarter inch. So what I'm doing is just adding these six tiny washers here and uh, three on each side. And that's basically just going to give me that quarter inch back uh, in the front here. Theoretically, we'll find out how well it works, but I'll go ahead and plop this here. Hmm, I guess I also should get uh, a depth for how this is going to be. I've already got the other one installed over here, so let's see what we got. I have an inch and a quarter back on this one. So if I say inch and a quarter, that's where the front of that goes. Looks like about right there ought to do it. Let's get this awkward angle in here. That's good enough in there. Now we can use a level. So I'm just gonna put this level up top here so that I can find where it needs to be. I'm gonna get in front of you here so I can see this thing. All right, right there. Just wrapped up some calculations here, and I have 21 and 3 8 inch between the two slides down below. And so if I add a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood, 3 quarter inch piece of plywood on the sides, then I will need a total of 19 and 7 8 inch here for this uh, piece this way. So let me get this here, and I'm going to cut it just ever so slightly short of that 19 and 7 8 here. 19, and let's just go ever so slightly off there. When I built this bench, I thought it would be cool to have a tool well in here, and I actually end up using it often to make cuts uh, because it uh, allows the blade to uh, go in here and not hit anything. Since I cut those holes out, I'm gonna have to uh, Put them back in here with the Craig jig. I've got this three inch piece here that I'm going to be using as the sides. So let's see what this length is going to be right at 27. So let's go ahead and measure and cut this. And we'll just use those pocket hole screws to get this reattached here. All right, here's my pocket hole driver. We got some pocket holes down here. 
use my pocket hole screws. So yeah, if you've never used the pocket hole jig, I have a link in the description down below to Amazon. It is an affiliate link, but uh, this is a tool that I use quite often here in the shop. Let's see if we can use our tool well here to get this into position. I'm hoping that just putting screws will be enough to hold this in place. So those will be holding uh, weight, but if I have the back and sides all screwed together, it should be good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this other side and get it attached, and uh, probably even the back and front as well, so we can move this project along. And the drawer is finished. I think it looks pretty good. So we've got uh, 21 and a quarter. So we need to go 10 and 5 eighths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is our center point. Mark that real quick. All right. And uh, the handle here has a 3 inch span between the two bits. So let's just move. Uh, let's see, inch and a half away from this line here, and that should give us the holes for this piece. Right, let's see how well that would line up. Yep, that'd be it. Now let's go down. Uh, I think one inch should be pretty good. Okay, my battery is almost dead, so if it cuts out, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got the drawer attached, and how I did that was just made a couple of marks with my tape measure and uh, put the screws on the side. But there's these little tabs I need to pull. One goes up, one goes down, and it allows me to pull the drawer off of the track here. And now I can get the last screw installed on the very end down here. But I'm gonna stop my battery so that I can show you this before uh, the battery dies. Well, this project was a bit more involved than I was anticipating, but I guess maybe it's good content. Uh, let's check out the drawer here. Nice and smooth, seems to be level. Not really sure what I'm gonna put in here yet, but uh, at least I have the option, right? So anyway, uh, I like it. Probably could have cut it down by an inch and a half to keep the plywood from sticking out a little bit, but it's not bad. Well, uh, as uh, typical Tuesdays go here in the mountains, it's raining. Um, but luckily we have the shop here to work with. Let me know what you think about the camera gantry angles that we got today. I liked them. Uh, definitely able to get into some positions that I normally wouldn't. But Thank you so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and be sure to ring the notification bell so you will be updated on all of the upcoming videos. Or at least not updated, but uh, you'll get a notification when a video comes out. How about that? All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.